Hey guys, so this video is about doing some of the prep work before we come in and pour the concrete floor. So we got the concrete floor scheduled to be poured tomorrow, which is the next day. And we were hired to come in here and do the prep work. Now, we don't do this on every job, uh, but occasionally we'll get to where we, we do this. This general contractor didn't want to do it himself. He didn't have any help. It's as strange as that sounds. So they hired us to come in here and do this. Now what we're doing right now is I'm putting down the Stego wrap, which is a 15 mil vapor barrier. This is what they consider a true vapor barrier, this 15 mil poly. Versus like a 6 mil poly is more of a, a vapor retarder. It slows down the amount of vapor transmission that might come up through the, the sub-base below. Whereas this stuff is really a blocker, so it's going to block any moisture that wants to come up from the sub-base. So this is the true stuff you want to get if you're really if you're really interested in getting a, you know a vapor blocker. So we're just cutting it like you saw it comes in a 14 foot by 140 foot roll. Um, now what Darren's doing is he's spraying on some adhesive so we can stick that that white isolation strip against the concrete wall. This this adhesive. 8178 is made especially for concrete so it works really good. We got a chalk line snapped on there for our concrete floor grade and that's what he's going by. Now what I'm doing is I'm using the Stego tape. That's a moisture blocking tape and I'm taping up my seams to make sure the, the vapor barrier is you know all tight on the inside. So we give that we give that adhesive spray just, you know, 30 seconds or so to tack up and then we can stick this foam right on. And today it's pretty cold out. This is the foam we're using, ISO strip. <clears throat> you can get that stuff on Amazon. Uh, you can get it at most local uh, concrete supply stores. It comes in four inch, five inch, six inch. We're using six inch here today. Um, and even wider if you want to get it. Usually you don't stock the wider stuff, but Four, five, and six is pretty common. And that's just to break the concrete floor up away from the wall to isolate it so it doesn't bond to the wall. So everything can move independently of each other if it wants to. Now we got the foam we're gonna put down. The spec called for two inches of foam on this floor. It's not getting radiant heat, but it, the spec calls for foam. And I think the building code in this town we're working in calls for it too so we're gonna put this foam down now the foam is it's pretty expensive in itself it's generally 35 to 40 bucks a sheet around here where we have to get it it's 25 psi so it's plenty strong enough to hold the concrete floor you know it's not gonna compress at all we actually put it under our floors in Maine here all the time so without ever having any problems We're just going to get that all laid down. That Now the concrete, you know, if you figure the, the cost of that styrofoam, <laughs> generally two inches of styrofoam is about the same cost as a four inch concrete floor. So it, it really adds a lot to the cost of the concrete floor here. And then, of course, you know, we charge, I don't charge by the hour to do this. I usually charge by the square foot. So I'll charge by the square foot to put down the vapor barrier and then I'll charge by the square foot to put down the styrofoam and then the ISO strip I charge by the lineal foot. If you want if you want to find out any of that other information you know on pricing and estimating then that all that stuff is down in the concrete underground where we talk about that down in the that's in a link below so I mean this stuff doing this stuff is is just as expensive as far as hiring someone like us to do as it is to pour a concrete floor. I mean, if we're going to be here all day installing this and not being somewhere else pouring concrete, then we're going to make money at it. We're not just going to charge by the hour here. Now this, luckily today, it happened to be on a day where we could show up, you know, about midway through the day after doing something else in the morning and get this prep work done for the next day 
it's it's late late in the fall here there's a as you can see off to the right just a little bit there's some insulating blankets over there that we're going to be putting down later on because it's supposed to get down below freezing tonight and when we show up in the morning we want to make sure there's no ice or frost or anything frozen on top of this it takes quite a bit of time you know to lay insulation you got to make sure especially if it doesn't fit perfect and you're going around pipes and plumbing and stuff like that you got to cut everything as tight as you can and then the edges, you know, this, as you can see, those are 8 foot sheets, so we've got 16 feet, and then there's a few inches <clears throat> left over over there, so now we got to cut strips of it to fit in, fit in there, and that's going to take some time. I like cutting this stuff with my, my little DeWalt battery saw, that cuts it really easy. That's probably the fastest way to cut this stuff. Just snap a chalk line, measure it out, snap a chalk line right out in the styrofoam and, and then just zip it off and fit it in. I do have a tiny little handsaw I do carry around me, almost like a jigsaw handsaw that I use for cutting around the, the circles, around pipes and stuff like that. You can see, just going around a few pipes takes as long as laying a whole piece, a whole big section of that without any. It's just as long or longer. You can imagine what it would be like with, uh, you know, a concrete floor that has a, a ton of plumbing. We had quite a few floors to pour on this project. There was a, there's a garage to do. There's an upper floor to do. There's an entryway to do. This is basically the basement floor, and they had to have this floor done before they started doing any of the framing, for whatever reason. Um, that's why we're here and, and trying to get this done as quick as we can. We can get this floor in form, because he had a bunch of his framers all lined up and ready to go at, for a certain date. And we wanted to make sure we were done and ready for him, so he wouldn't have to cancel his framers or delay them. You can see I had to cut a bunch of those two or three inch strips to fit in there. One good thing about that blue board is it's scored at 16 inches and it's scored right in the middle. So if you do need to, to break it right at that, you can break it right with your knee. Now we're putting down the, the sheets of mesh. The ones we get are 5 foot by 10 foot. Those, that size we can put right on the, right, right on our pickup trucks on the rack. And then we just strap them to whatever we have on the rack so it holds them nice and tight. If they were any bigger than that, I wouldn't, you know, we'd have to have them bigger. So we'll just lay these 5 foot by 10 foot sheets down. We can, you know, we get those at a concrete supply store. We have two or three of them pretty local to us. One is, uh, one is like a white cap construction. I think they call them HD Supply. And then the other one is just a local store. We like the flat sheets a lot better than the rolls because they lay nice and flat. And then we'll just pull that up into the concrete as we pour. Sometimes we have these metal pieces called slab bolsters we'll put under them to hold them up but we didn't have any today they were out of them they were out of stock so we just laying this down we'll pull it up when we pour it in we cut these just with a basic bolt cutter we cut this stuff cuts really easy this is what they consider the light gauge stuff it's about 10 bucks a sheet they do have a heavier gauge it's about twice the thickness of the metal or the steel and those are about twice the money, too. Again, so I charge by the square foot to put this stuff down. So much, so much per square foot. And then if I have to go get it and deliver it and bring it here, 
and I, I also charge for that too. I mean, if I'm, if I'm paying my guys to go to the, the concrete supply store to pick things up, then I'm going to get compensated for that, and I'm going to make something on it also. That's just how business works. So I can't afford, you know, just to pay my guys at cost to go pick up stuff for others. And it shouldn't be that way anyway. I mean, if they really, if the GC really wanted to, he can just get all this stuff delivered by making a phone call. But if he's going to leave it all up to me, then, you know, I'm going to make money on it if I'd have to do that work. Well, after we get all the wire mesh laid down, then we're going to put these insulating blankets down. And again, you can get these online, you know, depending on where you, where you look, they're going to be different pricing. But these are going to help keep the, the styrofoam and the wire clean and, and frost free when we show up in the morning. Because it's supposed to be about 25 degrees in the morning when we show up. And that's how we prep a floor, you know, before we get ready to pour. So again, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. If you like these videos, smash that like button. We'll see you on the next one.